Welcome back to Entrepreneurship Workshop Day 4. Um, thanks for joining us again. Um, I'm Caroline, once again. I'm Nicholas. I'm Jacob. I'm Kyla. I'm Jonathan. All right, great. Um, let's start. Today's topic is going to be cold calling. So there is going to be some speaking involved. So um, this is like a safe, a safe place for everyone. Um, so like just I hope you guys feel comfortable with like speaking out. And if you guys aren't, um, you guys can always type into chat, whatever works for you. So we're gonna warm up with a few questions. So if you could create a product to solve any problem in the world, what would it be? How would you promote it? And who would you market it to? Um, you guys can share in the group in the chat. And just like any idea works, use your imagination. Um, just try to get your thoughts down. Okay, so since today's topic is going to be about cold calls, how many of you have gotten phone calls from telemarketers? Or like if your parents have gotten calls? You guys can do like the react with like the thumbs up or like the hand. Yeah, so a large number of you. So uh, who can like um, take a guess at like the purpose of cold calls from telemarketers? You can just type it in the chat. Mm -hmm. So you can think about like why cold calling would be effective or like why people do it in the first place. Yeah, so like to promote their product. Yeah, exactly. So it's a form of marketing. And cold calling is good because you can directly reach someone through the phone. So you can like be directly connected to an individual. Um, so basically what is cold calling? Cold calling is contacting a person or organization in an effort to sell your product, ask for sponsorships, etc. So no prior connections are needed to call and it's a form of telemarketing. So we're going to talk about the differences between cold calling and emailing. Cold calling is very effective because you can get an immediate answer. So when you're calling someone, there has to be someone on the other end who picks up. So it's more of like a conversation. So you can talk to someone. Um, it works best for contacting general inquiry phone numbers um, because you're going to be directed to a person anyways. Um, you must be able to share about your company in a few sentences. So since it's over call, which is different from emailing, um, it's a conversation instead of you supplying the entire, um, the entire conversation. So you have to be able to like talk to the other person and then also keep them interested. So don't like ramble for too long about your product. An important thing to consider when cold calling is that they're gonna ask you questions that you're not, um, that you weren't considering like of answering in the first place. Uh, so you have to be ready to respond to those questions as they arise. And like hopefully because like you get one chance to convince a customer you're not going to cold call them again um, a second time versus when you're emailing you do have the opportunity to like email a second time if you want to so like um, when we're cold calling we have to be able to answer like all the questions consumers have um, so like you're you're able to close like that encounter there versus emailing like you're able to have like a long chain mm -hmm. okay so for emailing, you won't always get a response. So we did have um, a workshop on how to write sponsorship emails. Um, with my experience in writing emails, most of my emails, I don't get a direct response um, because sometimes people like will read them and then they won't have the incentive to respond to you since it's through email. But when I cold call people, there's always at least someone who will give me an immediate response. It works best for contacting individual people um, because this way you know that you're talking to a person instead of like a general inquiry, your email can get lost. Um, through emails, you can write more about yourself and your company and you can copy and paste emails from a template. So at Pally Robotics, when we email sponsors, we have like a general formatted template for emails. So it makes it a lot more efficient and we can email um, a lot of companies at once. Okay, so how to cold call. Um, first, you want to introduce yourself and your company. Um, so you can say like, hello, uh, my name is Caroline and I'm from Pally Robotics. 
and you want to talk a little bit about yourself and your company. Um, you can go off a script or an outline, um, but do not sound like a robot. So basically just think of it as a conversation and like you're talking to someone in real life. Um, pitch your company in a few sentences. Um, so try to like give a brief overview about your company without being too boring and giving too much information. It's important to include a call to action. So this can be something like, um, here's my phone number, call me back, we can talk more about this. Um, or you can link, like give them your website. So for Pally Robotics, we usually call for in-kind food sponsorships um, during our build season. Um, usually team members stay pretty late um, working on the robot and preparing for competitions. Um, so we do ask for donations from local restaurants um, to donate food to us so team members can stay later and longer at lab. And so um, one call to action that uh, I like to use is like, we can meet up in person, you guys can like visit our lab um, and things like that. Um, also be able to answer questions and respond accordingly. So Nicholas um, covered this briefly before. Since it is a conversation, um, which is unlike email, uh, people will directly ask you questions. So just be prepared to respond. Um, let them know how to contact you. So give them your phone number or your email. Um, these are ways for them to reply to you and get back to you. Lastly, don't be discouraged after rejection. Um, I've had a lot of cold calls where people just like rejected me up front, um, but cold calling is still pretty effective and eventually, um, eventually you will get a response. Something important to consider while you're cold calling is to always be persistent or to be, to keep on tying back whatever you're saying to like the action that you want them to take because it's easy for them to just hang up or to just ignore your call after a while. So what you want to be doing is you want to make it clear like what you want them to do um, after, whether it's just to like visit our website or to consider like emailing us or something like that. You always want to be tying it back to that so people know what they need to do and so your uh, time isn't wasted calling them. Yeah, so there's a question in the chat. Um, if they give you food, do you advertise them? Yeah, so for all of our sponsorships, we do give like sponsor benefits. Um, for a lot of our food sponsorships, we do like post about the food that we get on our social media. And um, things like this, it, it can be like discussed between the two parties. Um, sponsor benefits is something that um, we usually go into more detail like in a second meeting or like in an in-person meeting. All right, now time for an activity. This is first gonna be a group brainstorm. So we're a shoe brand and we just released a new shoe. Um, who should we contact over call? What points should we cover? And what is the call to action? So um, we can all discuss like these questions together as a group. Um, so first one, who should we contact over call? You guys can put your ideas into the chat or unmute yourselves. Yeah, so one person said um, a shoe company uh, calls celebrities to help represent your shoe. Yeah, these are all really great ideas. Um, so yeah, those, are, those are two different um, like mentalities going at it. So one is like we want to immediately sell a product versus calling celebrities and athletes to help market it is another way. Um, something to keep in mind is like because we're a shoe company and like we don't have like we're starting from the ground up, it is really important to get credibility. So I like the idea of calling people to promote the shoe. Obviously the call to action is gonna be different. Yeah, like Aaron said, sports teams, the mm -hmm. call to action is going to be different, right? We're not gonna be asking them to like invest in our shoe company. We're gonna be asking them to like, um, like wear our shoes or endorse them or something like that. So like our ask of them or like what they need to do is gonna be considerably different. And because of that, the cold call as a whole is going to be like, um, it's just gonna, it's gonna sound different and it's gonna have like a different, uh, atmosphere because we are going to be offering them like shoes and we're just asking them to represent them versus we're actually asking for money from other organizations. Um, all right, moving on, what points should we cover? So for the shoe, you guys can like use your imagination, um, usually talk about like what makes your product special, what makes your product unique and why people would want it. So for this shoe, like you guys 
can say, um, yeah, so they're very comfortable. Yeah, that's um, something good to cover. So say if you are contacting a sports team, right? What would something, what's like something to um, enforce? Like what's one of the in, important points if we're trying to get them to represent or to endorse our product? What's something that they need to know? Yeah, yeah, the, the looks, the durability, the traction. Yeah, the these quality are really of the shoe is one thing, but what else? Uh, what's an important thing for them to know? Think about like what the role of the sports team is going to be. Like, what should they know about it? Like, are we giving away our shoes for free to them, or like, um, what what does the sports team need to know in order for them to decide to like ultimately choose to sponsor us? Yeah, that's an option. We could we could theoretically pay them to do that. So yeah, that's a that's a good idea. So what what we were going for is like you want to make the benefits of it. Yeah, free shoes. Yeah, we want to make the benefits of doing it uh, very clear uh, because what the person on the other side is they're not going to hear necessarily like everything that you're saying about oh yeah these are great shoes stuff like that. They're going to hear what's in it for me. So you want to make the benefits of taking your call to action very clear so they know what uh, you're supposed to do and why they should do it. Um, yeah, so great. So they will get free shoes, pay them. Yeah, these are all great ideas. Um, so lastly, what is the call to action going to be? So like mentioned before, the call to action is basically um, something that the person you're contacting can immediately do after you call them. So it can either be something like, um, contact me back, we can talk about this more, or you can like link it to your website. Yeah, wear the shoes in a public environment is a great idea. Yeah. So like, um, for instance, like if we if they have like an upcoming event, you want to say, oh, yeah, please wear them here or just like contact us in the future. Like it, the call to action can be anything, but you want to make it very clear so they know what they need to do. All right, um, let's move on to another activity where you guys are going to go into breakout rooms. Wait, is there one more in the chat? Oh, uh, tell people about, it. yeah, so like for the customers, um, the sports team can like help promote and tell people. Great. All right, um, so imagine you're a tech company who recently developed a new exciting product. You'll be assigned to groups and your product will be randomly created for you. Imagine you're calling a potential customer, um, which is going to be your counselor, and then pitch your product. You will have two minutes um, to prepare, and you must be for two minutes on the call. And work together with your partners. 